Hey everybody, uh, welcome to today's teaching. We are going to talk about joy today. Um, joy is an extremely important part of your healing journey. And the word actually says that joy is a cure for your body. So that's what we're gonna look at. Um, there's a big difference between joy and happiness. Joy is something that comes from within and it's not based on your circumstances, whereas happiness is directly connected to your circumstances, okay? Um, so if things are going good, you experience happiness. If things aren't going so good, you're not happy. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about those today. So let's look in uh, Matthew five twelve. Let's start there. Matthew five twelve, and just see a few of the things that Jesus said about joy. Matthew five twelve. There. Matthew five twelve says, "Rejoice and be exceeding glad." For great is your reward in heaven. Jesus says, rejoice and be exceeding glad. This means you, you rejoice and be exceeding glad. This is something that you do, okay? Let's look in John 16, 33. John 16, 33 says, These things I have spoken unto you, that in me ye might have peace, in the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Again, the implied subject is you here. In this world you will have troubles, but you be of good cheer. In spite of the troubles, in spite of the sickness, in spite of everything that's going on, you choose to be of good cheer. Let's look at one more. Uh, Philippians 4.4. 4. This is Paul speaking, Philippians 4, 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. He had to repeat it, right? Because sometimes we need to hear it more than once. Rejoice, be joyful, you, you choose. Guys, God wouldn't have put these commands to be joyful, to rejoice in the word, if he didn't mean it. And he wouldn't have given you that command if you didn't have the ability to do it. You control your joy. Joy is not a result of your circumstances, but it's a choice. It's not a result, it's a choice. It's not a state of being, but it truly is a state of mind. Joy is a state of mind. You can walk in joy no matter what your circumstances, no matter how chaotic things might be, uh, no matter how out of order everyone or everyone else might be. You can walk in joy no matter what your physical condition may be. You can walk in joy in the midst of it all. Like Paul said in Philippians 4.11, you can and be content in every situation, whatever state you're in. You can be content. You can have joy. Okay, so here's the first piece of good news about joy. Okay, let's go to Proverbs verse se uh, chapter 17. Proverbs chapter 17. Proverbs 17. Verse 22. It says, this is the New King, or this is the King James Version. A merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit dries up the bones. I love the ESV version. It says, a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. Let's look at that verse a little bit more closely. Let's look at the Hebrew for some of these um, words. Uh, it says, a merry heart. This word heart is the, is the Hebrew word lay. And it's referring to your soul. It's referring to your thinking, your memory, your viewpoint, your feelings. So joyful thinking, joyful memories, joyful viewpoints, joyful feelings, okay, is good medicine. And that Hebrew word medicine means cure, a cure, a joyful heart, a joyful mind, a joyful state of mind leads to a cure in your body. But a crushed spirit, and that word spirit is the Hebrew word ruach, uh, 
is referring to your disposition. So disposition means troubled, bitter, discontent, angry, fearful. That's, that's a crushed spirit. So you see the two different ways of thinking. You have uh, a joyful heart, which, which is good thoughts, right? A good state of mind. Whereas a crushed spirit is, is a, a spirit uh, that is troubled, that is bitter, that is angry, that is fearful. Guys, fear will dry up your bones. It is one of the, the biggest tools, one of the biggest weapons of the enemy that he uses. So the first piece of good news is that joy is a cure for whatever ails you. Okay. The second piece of good news is that you already have this joy. Okay. Let's go to Galatians 5 verse 22. Galatians, Ephesians. Get there. Galatians 5 22 says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace. You see that joy is only secondary to love. This is a fruit of the Spirit. When you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you received this fruit of the Spirit on the inside of you, in your spirit, man. You have joy. You have abundant joy. You have overflowing joy. Your spirit is always joyful. Your spirit is always rejoicing. And if you'll remember from our past teachings that your spirit, man, is the true you. It is the true you. Your spirit is rejoicing right now in the midst of what you're going through. Your spirit longs to rejoice. Okay, so then the question is, then how do I access that? How do I access the joy that I have, right? Because I sure don't feel very joyful. Okay, well, the first thing you have to do is you have to deal with what's on the inside of you, okay? There's always going to be something externally that can cause you to not experience joy. Nothing is ever going to be perfect, okay? Uh, and, and Jesus said that. He said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will have trials. And let me be very, very, very clear that God is not the one who brings those tribulations. He is not the one who brings those trials, okay? Uh, remember in John 10.10, 10, it's the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. But the, Jesus came so that you might have life, and you might have life abundantly. He does not bring the trials and tribulations, okay? So, but nothing is ever going to be perfect because we live in a fallen world, right? So, but when you wrap your mind around your circumstances, or I guess it would be more appropriate to say when your circumstances are wrapped around your mind and controlling your mind, then you won't experience that joy that's in your spirit. You can't control a lot of times, most of the times, your external circumstances, but you can absolutely control what's on the inside of you. And that's a great first step to walking in joy is realizing that it is within your control to be joyful in any circumstances. And you do that by putting God's words above your own thoughts, above your own feelings, above your own circumstances. And as you do that, as you wrap your mind around God's word, God's word will become wrapped around your mind. And it will lead to joy. So you meditate on scriptures like Nehemiah 8.10 that says that the joy of the Lord is your strength. You, you meditate on verses like Psalm 103 that says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Notice that it says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, not bless the Lord, O oh my spirit, because your spirit is always blessing the Lord. Your spirit is always joyful. Your spirit is always rejoicing. David says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. He's talking to your mind. He's telling you to meditate on God's word. He's telling you to tap into that well of joy that's on the inside of you by getting your mind off your circumstances and setting your sights on the word of God. So the first thing that you do to be joyful is to, is to deal with the inside. And then the second thing you do is to deal with the outside. Okay, let's look in uh, what Paul says about your outside circumstances. Let's see what he says about trials and tribulations. And sickness is a tribulation. Sickness is a trial, 
right? Again, not brought to you by God, but brought to you by the enemy. But let's go to 2 Corinthians again and see what Paul says. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 17 and 18. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. You know, Paul said, my light afflictions. Paul was shipwrecked. He was beaten. He was imprisoned. He was hungry. He was thirsty. He was persecuted, right? But he said, again, remember in Philippians, I am content in whatever state I am. And it's because he had an eternal perspective. It's not your physical condition that's your problem, but it's the value. It's the weight. It's the time you spend dwelling on it. Paul had an eternity perspective. Every single trial, every single tribulation that we will come up against in this world is short-lived compared to the eternal weight of glory. No matter how bad it is right now, it pales in comparison to the light of the wonderful eternity that is promised to you. Let's look in Romans 8.18, and we're just going to solidify that fact with a few scriptures. Romans 8.18 says, For I reckon, or I count, that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be received in us. Remember back in Matthew 5.12, it says, Rejoice. Let's look at it one more time. Matthew 5, 12. One more time. Matthew 5, 12. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for, your, for great is your reward in heaven. Guys, I'm not saying that we just... Uh, we just put up with, with what's here because of the greatness that's coming um, after we go with Christ. But what I am saying is that it pales in comparison to eternity. Even if you don't receive your healing and you die and you go to be with Jesus, that's, didn't Paul say that? It's, it's, it's better. You know, I long to go be with Jesus, but it's better that I be with you. Eternity minded. The more you keep your mind on this, on on that eternity, on that great reward that's coming, the less and less your problems become. They just begin to shrink. It's like focusing your sights on eternity and then everything else in the periphery just kind of fades in the background. True joy lies in the recognition of Jesus. True joy lies in focusing on Jesus and what he did for you. And if you believe on him, it says in 1 Peter 1 8, it says that you can have unspeakable joy. You believe in Jesus. You believe in what he does did for you. You believe in the promises that God has for you. And regardless if you see the manifestation of that promise or not, you can still have joy in the midst of it. So you deal with the inside. You realize that I can choose to be joyful no matter what. Then you deal with the outside. You put those problems into perspective in the light of eternity. And then today, I want you to laugh. Everybody needs a good belly laugh every now and then, especially if things are rough and if they... They're going in a direction that you aren't wanting them to go, right? So what makes you laugh out loud? Is it a good joke? Is there a, I don't know, puppy videos? I love watching puppy videos. They make me smile. They make me laugh. They help me tap into that joy that I have on the inside of me. I want you to stare your circumstances right in the face today and laugh. You know, Kenneth Hagin was um, uh, amazing when it comes to this. You know, I, I've 
had the privilege of attending some of his conferences and he would just stop and he would just go, you know how you start laughing? You just, ha, 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 ha. And he would just keep going. And before he knew it, he was laughing. The audience was laughing and guys, laughter, joy, is a good medicine. Joy is a cure for what ails you. And no, it isn't easy to laugh in the face of everything that's going on. And no, your flesh doesn't want to do it. But deep within your soul, your spirit is longing to release that joy that's in there. It's longing to laugh. So even though you may not feel like it, and even though on the surface you might not have a single reason to be joyful and laugh, do it anyway. Tap into that well of joy that's on the inside of you and allow it to heal your heart and your body. Guys, I love you. Think on these things and I'll see you next time.